it's associated with in order to, to, to achieve something. You know, to, to correct the weakness. We have, we have in place some corrective action in place which forces property owners to comply with a new plan. You know, it's just, it's just going so, to take time so to when do we, it. So when we go through this, Steve, maybe, and we highlight what we're doing about each one of these items, right? We make a, a little note saying that there is a something in place yeah, that, with the plan. and it's going to take a period of time right. for uh, maybe a couple of generations to get rid of all of the last around the twenty eight. But as it appears right now, it's a tremendous weakness. There may be a plan in place that eventually, over time, it's going to correct itself. Yeah. You know, by the way, we have objectives that we talked about in the previous pages and that support this point, that it is a weakness. Well, we do. I mean, I mean overall, wastewater is high. One of the it's one of the reasons why we have some inconsistencies, because we don't have a real solid infrastructure on 28. I mean, are you saying like the real estate? Aesthetic, aesthetic, aesthetics other than the property values would be significantly enhanced if people have been bulldozed. Yeah, well, that would accelerate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gets the end result. Let's move on. Let's move on. It's going to make. Why don't you interrupt? Please. In. Please. In. Okay. Um, next one down. Um, websites not updated by the boards. And I just threw in there because somebody made a comment at a few other meetings leading to conflicts. Uh, and scheduling events. Yeah. I just took a note from one of our previous meetings and I threw it up there because I wasn't sure who made it or what, what it was about, but I thought it was a good comment. Right. We can throw it I, out. I, I might have because that's something that's always, uh, since I've become a selectman, every time I go to the, the websites, they're not updated. In fact, I, I spoke to Barbara Stats about that uh, the other day. It, uh, they're not updated and they, there are restrictions to getting them updated because only so many people, only certain people can or allowed to access the uh, uh, town website. But uh, you know, one of the thoughts I had, uh, you know, Monday nights, it almost feels like uh, uh, when I was the liaison for the uh, youth services, they had their meetings on Monday nights. Well, I couldn't go to their meetings because I had to be here. So it kind of, there's a conflict there. It would be nice if we, we were able to have our meetings, and I think the most important meeting in town is the Board of Selectmen meeting. And I think people need to know that. So, you know, I think that it, it, it is a weakness because people can't go to our, our website and, and find out what's going on and, and uh, be able to come to the meetings uh, and, or review minutes or, or what have you. It's all there to do, but it's not updated. So, uh, right. I, I think the lead. I think you're limiting it when you. When right. You all right. That's only one issue you get Great. out of that. Well, the website not being updated. I disagree. I appreciate. Don't disagree. <laughs> All right. Um, last bullet. I threw in there, this as my comment. Uh, low voter turnout. Yeah. And yeah. Percentage of eligible voted residents coming to our meetings and the town meeting. Yeah. yeah. Good bullet. Right. Two one. Two one. Okay. Opportunities. Um, I'm making a suggestion that. We uh, increase positive communication with the public. I'm going to suggest we get rid of it and improve communication with the residents. Because I think we have a lot of communication, but I think we should we should, we could try to improve on it. We talked about the websites that exist today. Use them to improve them. That's, we talked yeah, about North Camp. That, that's fine. Okay. Uh, nothing else. Threats. I threw in this bullet on the right hand side, increased foreclosures and further reduction in the value of homes. I think it is a threat for our town that we, we see the trend continuing. Any disagreement? Nope. On the opposite side, high cost maintaining the middle school and the high school if not a, uh, a not renovated school. I think it's something we should probably put on this list as a threat. If we don't get that new school passed. We're probably going to be faced with some issues related to these existing schools. Probably a threat we need to be documented. Any, any issues? A question, or, or new facilities built that, that's in addition to the schools? Is that? Uh, if you don't renovate the no, middle high school, not if we don't build a new facility. Okay. Okay. All right. I think, Mike, you may just have to work on that. Word in that word all the, yeah, yeah, wording. I agree. I see what you're saying. And trends. Uh, let's see. Um, everybody 
uh, that responded back to me and agreed that we get rid of the inability for public to support current levels of services. Uh, Greg and I, uh, Greg, Sean, and Bob, I think you all agreed with me uh, that we deleted it. Greg, I think you had an excellent comment. This one here in purple, inability to fund the current service levels is the bullet that Greg, you suggested, which I think is an excellent bullet that I would suggest the board consider adding. Delete that and add it with Greg submitted. Okay, very good. With that. Okay, and then down at the bottom, um, Sean and I, when we went through it, we think that un instead of willingness, it should be unwillingness to foster intermunicipal collaboration. And uh, Greg also agreed that it is unwillingness. And then I think Jeff, your comment was by whom? Yeah, <laughs> it's still my question. <laughs> <laughs> Who's unwilling to foster into municipal collaboration? So we all agree it's unwillingness? No. No. But by, by whom? There's, and there's yes. Before the trend, the, the trend is a willingness to foster into municipal collaboration right. because the state, is, the state is promoting it. They're getting more and more communities involved in it. This is a trend that's taking yeah. place. In the state, not here in the Right, but where, where is it here? I, right. I know here DW it, where does it some of it. I agree with you in the state. Right. I wish we would. But straight down the municipality. In other words, it's it's more and more people are. These are outside trends. But they, they impact us. Okay. For fun labor. Okay. Fun. Yeah, it's on labor. But yeah, it's going to take, you know, a concerted effort to, to negotiate with the collective bargaining what it's about to get into yeah. this collaboration. Good. So what are we doing? Yeah, there's, you know, there's communities out there that are try different things. And, uh, I think the trend is across the state, as mm -hmm. said, uh, to try to move in that direction, make it easier. Yeah. Whether or not it comes mm -hmm. about, you know, a trend is a trend. It can change overnight. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think so there, are, there are programs out there that are being promoted. I, I view this slide as a trend within our community. I, I know most of these things impact we may, state, not have taken, we, may, we may not have taken advantage of it yet. We haven't taken advantage of it yet. Right, that's the way I was reading this. And that's why. Right, I, me too. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what we together. Right. Reduce cost of goods. Uh, public trust. This is across the board. Uh, really support over it. Across the board. Only for good. Across the board. Across the board that directly across impacts the board, here, though. Across the board. Yeah. Across the board. And again, across the board. The willingness to foster. Yeah, there's a willingness to find a local officials to do it. The willingness to find a state official to do it. The state official will help us. I have looked at trends on a more global basis right. because we're looking at you know, how they're going to impact the community. Every single one of those is, isn't uh, an offering, exclusively an offering. Yeah, but. And, and when we're doing it, we're looking at the, the last one. But, but. Locally rather than more globally as far as what the trends Yeah, but I, I, I mean, I thought we would. And the trends that are going to affect either positively or negatively. But, but these are trends for North Reading. I mean, that's how I, how I was looking at it. And that's how I read it, too. Yeah, that's how I was no, looking at it. Right. Right. When you look at it from that perspective, I can agree right. with that willingness. Yeah. Yep. I look at it as from the outside, and, and these are the things that we should be looking at and making adjustments to what Okay. Okay. All right. Then it makes sense done. the way it was done. done. Okay. The only change I'm going to make on this slide is I'm going to add Greg's bullet and right. this bullet. Okay? Yep. But that's it. Other than that, I think okay, we're locked in. I think it's great. Yeah, look, um, would you do the last one? The last thing yeah, is... Just leave it as it was. The last thing is I left you a copy of this... Uh, no, no, I was thinking. Yeah. I just want to make sure everyone knows. This isn't um, something that we have you know, I have editorial pride on. This is don't be afraid to um, have it on the board. Um, the key is to it. I don't want to get it out. Greg and the staff have helped me out significantly to get some trend data. I think the really the most important thing from this document we can use is the trend data to help support why we're doing a strategic plan. I think it gives you a lot of value. It opens your eyes up to some things. And it gives us the rationale why we want to take helps, some of these It also helps defend the setting of the priorities. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The key, that's the key. Mm -hmm. Great. So uh, there's copies here. Um, Greg and I were talking earlier. He thinks that he can give me at least a lot of the information to help me fill in the holes. You'll see a lot of question marks and a lot of holes in there. And then once I get that done, I'll get it back out to you guys. And, and then as we review what our, you know, obviously 
you, there's no way we're going to tackle all of these things at once. Right. So my thoughts here again are that we prioritize, we determine what our real top priorities are, and then we create project plans for them. Maybe individual board member takes mm -hmm. one each of these to, to drive the thing forward in some form of completion. So we will be discussing this on and off. Good job, Mike. The rest of the well, uh, Sean, too. Sean, Sean. Mike will do most of it. Thank you. Okay, town administrators. I'm, I'm yep. sorry, special special legislation regarding health insurance. My, my reaction to it is that if all the communities started to file this, we might shake the legislature up into mm -hmm. you know, revisiting this and not necessarily go as far as this, uh, the town of uh, Lowell wanted to go, but to come up with something that's much more workable than we have right now. Right. Steve, you're sitting on the other side of the fence. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, you know, I'm saying is I, I think that the, the more pressure that's put on the legislature, and this is an interesting way of doing it. Absolutely. You know, in other words, uh, you know, I suspect that there's no way that they're going to set up a home rule petition and pass it for this request, but if enough of those requests come in, they might get a little more serious about making some of the changes that we absolutely need. So that's similar to the way, that's similar to the way, I mean, I think maybe it's, we should so they're doing it. Do it. That's yeah. what, uh, what Mr. Uh, Lynch is trying to do is to get a whole bunch of communities to do the same thing. Yeah. How, how do we go about if we were serious about it? Like, what's the steps we take? You send a letter to our local official. Mm -hmm. We send her to talk. Right. And then we request. We can, we can copy what their proposed act is yeah, and just send it off from, from us. And uh, considering our inability to effectively negotiate changes in health insurance plans with our employees, and the legislature not really willing to, to give us any tools to... I just didn't know the steps and the yeah. structure that we actually have to go through. So well, I mean, you make a request to your local rep for a home rule petition. They put it on the uh, the agenda. Mm -hmm. Most of them are rubber stamped. <laughs> this isn't going to be rubber stamped. <laughs> I mean, I can't be in support of most people who don't to say hello at all. They're just scrapping everything I've been doing. It's an extreme measure that's being proposed. Maybe the union is in hopes of compromise. But uh, as this <coughs> is currently proposed, I can't sit here and support it. Well, I mean, well, if you were going to be consistent with what was discussed in the letter I sent in back a while ago, with those board voters, uh, you expressed the same concern. Yeah, I mean, so, so I, I kind of expect there, There's no doubt that the legislature. What's that? Do you think that hurts that sound? No, no, no. Steve, I, I, I Steve it, I, feels I, that it's unfair because it circumvents the collective bargaining. Yeah, I mean, it totally scraps the collective bargaining laws. And that's not the way to do it. You know, in other words, I think the legislature has failed uh, miserably in relation to uh, providing municipalities the opportunity uh, for a reasonable approach in reaching a consensus with the collective bargaining units. I mean, the 70% threshold is not reasonable. Uh, but the very few committees have been able to achieve that because it's not a reasonable level. And 
that. So there's a lower threshold that can be, uh, that can be met. Who knows? 